not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Donkey Kong Country on the SNES, SNES, whatever. This is the, believe it or not, the first time I have ever, well certainly the first time I've ever played it on proper Nintendo hardware. I may have, oh dear, I'm trying to find, there's got to be a button that makes him do things. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what the controls are. I have no instructions. Ah, oh, uh, that, that, is that it? Really? So it's jump and forward roll. It's like PE lessons in school. Wow. So will that do something? Okay, that's cool. All right, then. Okay, then. Throw your children about. It's, it's... What is the difference between Donkey Kong Jr. and Diddy Kong? I, I don't know. And didn't I hear somewhere that this actual Donkey Kong is actually Donkey Kong Jr. who grew up? I don't know if that's right. So what I do know about this game is that it was released approaching the end of the, the life of the SNES, or so everyone thought, there were more powerful systems on the way that had 3D and fancy more impressive graphics and all of that. And then Rare, and Rare to me will always be um, ultimate play the game, makers of Jetpack. Um, they, they came out with this and basically blew everyone away and it was like hey you don't need to go 32 bit you can play games that look this good on your current hardware um, which was a good marketing ploy because it really does look lovely and it, to be oh dear, it plays well as well given that I haven't got a clue what I'm meant to be doing and I'm not really a fan of platform games and I may be missing details. Um, I am actually kind of enjoying this. It's, um, I think it's so pretty it's hard not to be impressed by that aspect of it. Is the gameplay great? Well, it's not unreasonable, it's not unfair, it's not, you sold right off your little you see, I like armadillos as a rule, but that one's a bastard. Okay, so what? I've lost Kong now, whichever Kong he might be. Is he in that? No. Okay. Oh, you sod off. Can I roll into them? Yes, I can. I want that. I don't know what it does, but I want it. Piss off. Yeah. Taste your own. Okay, don't go down there. You'll die. Thanks for the warning, game. Mm. Kind of accustomed to when there's a, 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 a leap of faith kind of thing. Jumping down there, there should be a platform. You expect it. It's like there is a certain language in terms of game design. Hello, there's a rope. You armadillo bastard. It's, they're like um, dime bars in reverse. Crunchy on the outside, smooth on the inside. Ass. I don't know why I did that. There was no reason to do that. It probably wasn't the right thing to do. Yeah, sod you. Can we go up that? We can. Excellent. Bananas. I like, but oh, you bastard! I like bananas. We'll just go up there. Is that going to be cold? Yes, it is. Excellent. Now, I yeah, there you go. You can you can do that. Oh yeah, that's cool. They do that tag team thing. Oh. 
I want to do a Tarzan yell, but I'm not gonna. Oh, I missed I miss some of me bananas. So, I want there to be a thing where I can have me bi Don't be a wuss. Have Big Kong grab Little Kong and throw him. Can you do that? I'm unaware of it, if it's an option. What's all that about? Okay. So we're going to do a Spider-Man now, are we? All we need is some skyscrapers. And some biplanes. Okay, I can't get up there. What do we get? What? 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 Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Ah. Well, that was handy, wasn't it? I wonder what happens if you do the tag team hand slap thingy while you're up there. What's that? Some kind of big oh boll oh bollocks. Well, that was harsh. Oh, we got to do all that again. I think we do. Not ideal. I hope the brightness is all right. It's kind of dark. Looking at it here. Oh, yep. Yes. So, if you've already got both apes, I was going to say monkeys, but they're not monkeys, they're apes. If you've got them both and you lob that particular barrel, you don't get another one. Kind of a shame, really. Oh, you burk! Oh, for God's sake! What is it about? Have they put grease on the edge of that cliff? Or platform, or whatever it is. That's just harsh. Or I'm just... Uh, my my muppetry is consistent in its muppetositude. Because that's a word. Ah. Oh, okay. We're all right. On your head. And here we go. No, no, no! Jesus! I don't know why. And it's not the game doing that, it's me doing that. I, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong character or something and I go right and I land and then I go left and duh! Face palm. Okay, that is Donkey Kong Country. The most inept playing of it you're likely to ever see. I'm I'm gonna stop there because I'm trying to do a big batch of games while I have the time. So uh, thank you for watching. Hello. Today's question for Q and A is from Arthur Samuel Rowan. Link to his channel down there, and he asks for Q and A. What do you think about current day modern microcomputers like Raspberry Pi and other similar one board machines? Do they have the same kind of potential like those old micros back in the day? And have you considered to build your own emulation machine based on that kind of hardware? Um, I'll answer the second part of that first. I have a Raspberry Pi B, the original one, I have a Raspberry Pi Zero, and I have a Raspberry Pi Two. I've got a Raspberry Pi Three kicking around here as well, but it's not mine. The 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 I've made videos actually of, of all of them. Um, I should link to them. Whether or not I will depends on how lazy I am at the time of uploading and stuff. Anyway. Um, the original Raspberry Pi, I got one of those when they first came out, and at that time support for them was fairly limited. Um, all I had that would run on it then was um, a Linux distribution. Uh, I think it was Debian, not sure if that's even how you pronounce it. I didn't like it. I found it sluggish and limited and frustrating to use, because I don't like Linux. Um, so I wasn't thrilled by it, but then I found, what's it, well it's called Kodi now, XBMC, like as a standalone thing on it, and put that on there, and I liked that, 
um, using it as a media device I found it really quite cool. Um, then I got the Raspberry Pi Zero which was more powerful than the original Raspberry Pi though it's obviously not even close to the current boards but I I liked it. I used it um, for emulating all kinds of old hardware and um, we'll get on to that in a minute. Um, I also ran Kodi on it as well. Um, it was a bit iffy for that. It would struggle. Then I got the Raspberry Pi 2 and that is my main what I use. It's, it's just, it's, can you see it? Yeah, there. Whatever. I use that as a TV box. Um, I've got Kodi on it. I use, I've got an um, emulation station, you know, RetroPie, which has got Kodi built in, but it's got all the other emulators, loads of stuff, and I use that, I would say I use that for whenever I want to be emulating stuff and playing it on the telly, but actually I don't. Um, mostly if I'm emulating stuff, I'm doing it on the GPDXD+. Plus. But it's like if I, I have a, a twi two controllers, on one USB thing plugged into that Raspberry Pi and if I have friends round, if I had friends um, that's what would be used to play retro games mostly it's just sitting and collecting dust it's like it's a nice thing to have mostly it just gets used for watching stuff on Kodi and that's actually not very often um, but it's a cool thing to have and I do like it um, so, how do I think these modern microcomputers compare to the old micros of the 80s? Um, here's the thing, I don't actually know how they compare in terms of... Um, I mean, the original idea for the Raspberry Pi was it was for kids to learn programming. It was a cheap, easy way of getting a computer affordable. You know, not, not exactly pocket money price, but you know, um, certainly cheap Christmas present if not stocking filler, um, and easily, you know, you, you, scratch, you could learn programming on that, and Python, and all, all the, it's just a good way to get into programming on the cheap, whether or not it served that purpose, were kids, are kids interested in it, do schools support it, I don't know this, um, I'm, it's, I'm not in that field, I'm not in the education, area sector thing so I don't know whether they are in education in the way that the BBC micro was back in the day if you were in school in the 80s and I was your school will have had a computer or a lot of computers and it's very likely the BBC micro will have featured there though in my school it didn't we had research machines link 380 and 480Z Z's, which were kind of unusual and very interesting. Um, so, I mean, do these things stand up in comparison? I kind of don't think so, because... not. I mean, in terms of ability, they're streets ahead, absolutely miles. Um, and for programming, they're far better to learn programming on because they're more capable. But do they have the appeal? I'm not sure in that they're not or sitting on the shelf in WH Smith's or Boots or Taylor and McKenna. Are they still a thing? They were when I when I was a kid. Or Beatties, I don't know if they're still a thing either. You know, you could go into your toy shop or, or wherever and there would just be shelves full of Spectrums and, well, maybe some Commodore 64s, more likely ZX81s. There probably weren't BBC Micros sitting on the shelves, but... I saw a lot of Acorn Electrons around in various shops. You know, you, you saw them on the high street. They were visible. They were advertised in mainstream press. Never mind your computing press. Um, you couldn't miss them. And if you were a kid, or a geeky kid, and I was, you knew they were there and you wanted them. Um, maybe your parents didn't understand why you wanted them. Um, these single board computers I don't I don't think they get that kind of um, exposure certainly that 
specialist press and media and stuff online and and magazines and that do cover them but are these the kind of things that teens are going to read and you know they they were originally aimed at teens to learn programming i i don't think so i could be wrong but they're kind of they don't have that cool factor they don't stand out computers have been a thing for donkeys years now teens will not have known a world without home computers and tablets and phones so when they see this circuit board with nothing on it if they see one they're not going to go my god i got to get one of them because that's so cool they're going to be what the bloody hell is that and why would i want one um which is a shame because they are good they're they're fun to mess around with i they do have that's the thing, if you've got like a pie, there is probably something it can do that you will like. It took a while for me to figure it out, um, because I, I just had that, that Linux installation, and I was like, Neh. But when um, Emulation Station, ret uh, what is it, Retro Pie, became a thing, I was all over it, I was like, I love this, this is great. And, and the pie for me then had a purpose. Uh, and there will be other things that it can do and do well that will give it a purpose for other people but it is that you've got to know about it before you know you want one because I think just to, to know it exists isn't enough really so uh, no I don't think it compares to micros back in the 80s because I, I don't think it has the same kind of appeal hmm okay hope that answers your question um, and anyone else, if you've got a question you would like answering in a video like this, just leave a comment down there. Uh, begin your question with for Q&A, so I know not to answer it in the comments. And uh, I will get around to answering it eventually. Okay, thank you for watching. What do you mean, subscribe to his Patreon? I already paid for breakfast. What more does he want? What? Uh oh Seems he wasn't invited. Oh, I suppose I could eat his as well.